How do we analyze qualitative data? Well, there are a lot of different approaches, but there's no one right way to do it. Savin Baden and Major would describe it as breaking data into meaningful parts, or you might describe it as making sense of the data, or a systematic search for meaning. And it doesn't really matter what the data is. Uh, it might be semi-structured interviews, focus groups, diaries, documents. The basic process is going to be the same for all of them. And it's this, read your data and read it again and again and again and again. Analysis of qualitative data comes down to reading it in very close detail. Familiarize yourself with every nuance of the data and all the different methods of analyzing qualitative data are really different ways of reading the data in different lights and with a different focus. In some ways, the analysis of qualitative data is a lot like writing a book report. Um, you would summarize the plot, uh, you would describe the characters, what they do and their main motivations. And then you talk about some of the themes and the subtext which exist in the book. The report that you write about the book is going to be shorter than the book itself, but it's going to give um, whoever reads that report an idea about what's in the book, what's happening, uh, and the most important things going on in it. So let's imagine that we are writing a high school book report. Let's imagine that we're reading um, Of Mice and Men, John Steinbeck's classic 1937 novel, something that a lot of you have probably done a book report for back in the day. Now, the first time you read it through, you might not get all of the different themes in it. Um, so you might pick up some obvious things, uh, rabbits, poverty, farming, um, how we treat disabled people. But then with later readings, you might start to pick up more subtle things. So you might want to talk about the concept of the American dream um, or friendship or uh, guilt um, and remorse. And just like when we're analyzing a book, the challenge with qualitative data is not the volume, it's the depth of the data. Now, If Mice and Men is only 107 pages long, it's a very short book, but there's a lot going on in there. And that's what you'll find about most qualitative data. It talks about very detailed, very difficult topics where there's a lot of going on, a lot of context, a lot of subtext, uh, a lot of diff people's different life stories and experiences to try and explain and describe. And qualitative data is also more complex than a novel because it's unstructured data. And this means that it's a lot more random. Nobody's trying to create patterns out of it. Um, it may not follow a particular structure. So it's very difficult to find what you need from the data. And you'll also very quickly find that even if you're just doing a couple of semi-structured interviews or just a few focus groups, the transcripts of that will result in probably hundreds of thousands of words, something like a master's or PhD thesis worth of um, words to describe and analyze and understand. And so analyzing qualitative data is a lot about that, uh, interrogating the data, summarizing it, and then pulling connections across it. And the aim is to get your data to answer your research questions, whatever they might be for your project. So what does the data say? And what do the participants in your project say about the research question? A pretty typical approach for qualitative data analysis will be to read the data, compare the data, and then interpret the data. So that's the basic kind of three-step approach that we're going to look at here. The first stage is reading and familiarization. And this is to start the process of thinking about what's going on in the data by really almost literally knowing it backward. So we read the data, we ask ourselves if we think we understand everything in it, and if not, we go back and read it again or we read it in a different way, looking for something more different in the data. And we go back and we read it again and again, and it's often an iterative and cyclical process until we feel that we understand the data. When we can say that we understand the data, then we can go and start writing up our findings and writing up the report. So there are a variety of different ways in which we can read the data. The most basic is what's often called content analysis. So it's kind of literally what people are saying, what they're talking about, what is in the data. There's also thematic analysis. So what are the themes or topics? What are people, what kinds of thing are people talking about in the data? And then there's things like discourse analysis, and that's looking at how people say things, what kind of words and language people use. So these are all different ways of looking at the data and reading it in a slightly different light that might bring different things to the fore. And that's important because in the qualitative data, we're not just looking for what people say, but we're looking for what's not said. What are people not talking about? What subtleties are there? What subtext is there? And those are all the things that we need to pull out from our analysis. One of the ways that can help us read data is to start to structure it using quotes. Um, so to find sections of text which are about something interesting and then tagging or labeling, categorizing or coding them in some way. 
and this is sometimes called coding of qualitative data. You don't have to do coding, but it's a very useful tool to help you find quotes which will support your arguments and answer your research questions later on. And you can do this just by looking for the interesting sections. Uh, you can do approaches like line by line, IPA or in vivo coding, where you're looking at very specific ways of summarizing and looking exactly what's being said. But regardless, it's the same kind of process. Now, the second stage with analysis after reading and familiarization is comparison. And this is where we're looking to see what's different about the data. And that might be what's different across um, different people, across different periods of time, um, across different categories or events. Um, what things are the same and what things are different and why? And trying to understand that. And then the third stage will be interpretation. Uh, and for a lot of authors, this is something which is a very distinct separate stage, a different part of analysis. And interpretation is about what does the data mean? And it's almost a process of going back and analyzing the analysis, looking at the coding, the summaries, your notes, and to try and explain the story that's in the data. You could say that analysis involves uncovering patterns in data and interpretation involves undercovering meaning, messy multiple meanings in the data. And one of the things that we're doing at this stage is to try and test our hypothesis. So we've got a research question and we've got an idea in our head about what's going on. Um, and that's our hypothesis. And at this stage, we're still trying to create new hypotheses. So we're trying to say, uh, does this data match what we think is going on here? Can that support the way that we're interpreting the data? And one of the things that you'll do during the interpretation stage um, is actually probably go through and look at your codes if you're doing coding and finding which codes are important, which ones have meaning, um, and even coding those codes. So creating higher level themes um, and other ways of looking to see um, which are the interesting things in the data. You can kind of consider this an idea of breaking something down into blocks. So the codes are the very basic building blocks and then building them back up to build a more complex picture of what's going on. Now there is software which you can use to help the process. You can use something like Excel or Word. Most people would just use um, paper, highlighters, notes. They would write on their transcripts, um, annotating to help them remember things as they read through the text. The software packages can help you do this um, in a slightly more nuanced way because they can keep track of your codes and themes, but they don't do any of the analysis yourself. You still have to read and understand the data. In fact, I would describe those software tools as tools that help you read the data in different ways and then keep track of the notes and comments and observations you've made while reading the data so that when you come to writing up, you can quickly find the bits of data which are interesting and relevant to you and you can back up what you're trying to say. So we've got some other videos which can help. So if you want to look at coding, there's a video here on coding data. And if you want to understand what qualitative software can do, there's another video here which will take you through some of the basics of using qualitative analysis software. So one of the software packages is Quercos. It's designed to be very easy to use. It's designed to, at all stages, help you go back to the text and read it. So to try and keep you very close to the data and help you with that familiarization process. We make it very visual and very intuitive. Um, it's really fun to kind of play with and explore with your qualitative text data. Um, there's a free trial that you can download um, and a lot more video tutorials which will show you the ropes about um, importing your data, working with your data, and how to do that analysis in the software. So this was a very brief introduction to analysis of qualitative data. There are many more specific techniques which you can use, and you'll read a lot more about those uh, in the links below or on some of the other video tutorials we have. Don't forget you can also download a free trial of Quercos from the link below um, and see how that can help you analyze and interpret your qualitative data.